Many of my patients come from all over the United States. If they come from the Philadelphia area, I usually see them two or three months or longer before the surgery and we plan everything out and we have a preoperative visit two or three weeks before surgery. If many of our patients coming from far away find it difficult to get to Philadelphia for a pre-op visit, we can take care of most of that through the mail, through the email, through faxes. And you can either have their preoperative laboratory work, we always require a blood count, a urinalysis, and if you're over 40, an EKG. You can do that at your local hospital with your local doctor. They fax us that lab work. I do in history, usually history and physical over the telephone. Your height, your weight, your medical background, your surgical background, what medical problems you're being treated for. And in some cases, I ask patients to send me pictures, especially if we're going to do facial or top surgery. I need to know what I have to work with. With those pictures in the front view, oblique view, side view, then I can evaluate that. And usually I, I ask people to send me their phone number. And I call them up on the phone one evening and we talk for maybe a half hour or an hour. Uh, and so we come to a plan on what they want to do and what I think is necessary. And I won't do something that I don't think is right. Right. When people come from out of town, they usually arrive at our center here in Battle Canwood, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Philadelphia. We're about 15 minutes from the airport, about 10 minutes from the Philadelphia train station. I meet with them for at least an hour, maybe an hour or two hours before surgery, go over their history and physical, get to know each other a little bit better. But we get all the paperwork done that we need for the hospital. I take their preoperative pictures. I clip their genital area, remove all the hair. They don't eat anything the day before surgery. They have only liquids because we like the GI tract, the intestinal tract to be empty, less chance to get sick uh, after surgery from anesthesia. We have five little studio apartments here in our building, this, in the same building as my offices are located. But it saves the patients a lot of money from staying in a hotel or in the hospital for an especially long time. And I'm able to see my patients every day. The morning of surgery, I personally pick my patients up here at the center and I drive them to the hospital. They check into the hospital, I show them exactly where to go. I come back an hour later, the hospital has them admitted to the floor, they change, uh, and then they're taken to the pre-op room of the OR. And then I meet them there and I go over everything again and make sure the nurses have all the paperwork they need and they have all the lab work that we had ahead of time and we usually send that in a couple weeks before surgery. So all that is set to go. And they're met by the anesthesia people. They usually pay one check to the hospital or a credit card to the hospital. When they get to the operating room, they give another check or the credit card to the anesthesia department. They've already paid us. We get paid about three, four weeks before surgery. That all has to be paid in advance. They meet the anesthesia. They meet my residents that work with me at surgery. And if every, when everything is in order, off to the OR we go. They go into the operating room. They wiggle over to the operating table. They already have an IV and they're given a little sedation through the IV. The anesthesia puts a little mask on their face to give them just oxygen, fresh air, and they put them to sleep through their IV. Then they'll put an intubation tube into their trachea and they're asleep and the anesthesiologist and their machinery keeps very accurate control of every breath of the patient. They're hooked up to a cardiac monitor. We see their blood pressure continuously. We see every heartbeat and every pulse. They have a, we have a running EKG cardiac monitor on them continuously. And we do the operation. We prep the area, we put all the drapes around, then we get started and we do the surgery. The surgery usually takes about four hours, can be a little less or a little bit more, but usually about four hours. I'm not in a big rush. The patient's going to have this result for the rest of their life. When the surgery is over, the patient wakes up, we put them back on a a stretcher on a gurney, we go back to the recovery room, the patient's in the recovery room for one or two hours so they're more awake, and then they get transferred up to the floor, and they stay there for three nights. We don't like you up and running around because you have all these skin grafts and flaps inside. You just have to be still the first few days, so I like to keep my patients in the hospital for at least three days. Then, either I come or I send a driver up to the hospital three days later, unless they have a relative or a friend with them, and we bring them back here to the center, they bring them into one of the apartments upstairs or right on this same floor as my office. We, I check them right away and make sure everything's okay. They still have their Foley catheter in their bladder. They have the packing in their vagina and that stays there for the first week. And they can eat and drink and do, not drink a lot of liquor, but they can eat and drink liquids after surgery, even the, the, the same day of that evening of surgery even. And from then on they can drink and eat normal food. They start dilating one week after surgery, four times a day for three weeks. And then they go home. After another week, usually they're fine, all the sutures are out, 
and they can go home after the second week. I like to keep them in the area for two full weeks. And then they can go home to wherever they came from unless they have a problem. We keep them a little longer. They go home and they keep in touch with me by phone. I like to see my patients again within a month or two after surgery. If they live closer to Philadelphia, I get them back sooner. If they live further away, I keep in touch with them by phone. I keep in touch with all my patients. And when they're here, I see them every day. In all of the surgery that we do, patients have to understand, people have to understand, when they go for any type of surgery, there are no guarantees. Doctors cannot guarantee the results of any surgical procedure on any person. Why? Because doctors don't have control over all the variables involved in healing. Doctors don't have control over a patient, what the patient does once they're out of our sight. And also different people just heal differently. Usually we don't see any major problems. And so far I haven't had a patient that had any major complication. But minor problems can happen. And there's a whole list of potential complications or problems that people can have. And I go through a whole printed out list with my patients before we do the surgery so they understand all the ramifications and the possible potential risks before we do the surgery because people should have what we call an informed consent. When they sign a consent, it should be informed. Now I go through every one of the possible problems. You could have bleeding. You certainly, every operation can have swelling and discoloration. That's a risk of all surgery, but that's not usually considered a complication because everyone who has surgery has swelling, 100% of people. Not everyone, but most people have some discoloration. If a little tiny bit of blood gets underneath your skin, it turns it black and blue. So there's almost always discoloration. Usually it takes two to three weeks for the discoloration to disappear and about 75% of the swelling. And the rest of the swelling takes many months to go away. People have to know they're going to have permanent scars. Usually the scars heal as fine lines, but it takes about a year for a scar to heal well. They're always pink or red in the beginning. Somewhere between six months and a year, they usually become flat, soft, and white. It's possible if a person doesn't heal well, they could have a bad scar. What's that? A thick or wide or discolored scar, or a scar that contracts and distorts adjacent tissue, or a keloid which keeps growing until it overlaps normal adjacent skin. That's pretty rare, but that can happen. Infection can happen after any surgery. If it starts to get a little red and swollen and tender within several days to up to two weeks after surgery, We'll put them back on antibiotic. If someone develops an abscess, which is possible after any surgery, which is a collection of pus in a surgical site from infection, usually the patient's own bacteria, the treatment of an abscess is to drain it and keep the patient on antibiotics and to clean the wound. Necrosis of tissue, necrosis or death of tissue. That's another possible complication, and it's actually small areas of skin death are very common. A lot of incisions, there's tension on the incisions, some of the skin is very thin, some of the f tissue that we put the skin grafts on are just fat, and fat does not have a good blood supply, so it's hard, it's difficult for the body to get the skin graft to take when there's not a good blood supply in these fatty areas. It's another reason why we don't like to operate on very heavy people, because fatty tissues, adipose tissue, does not have good blood supply, so it doesn't heal well. So all these things can happen. If there is an area of necrosis, we trim, we trim it off or it just comes off by itself with the dressing changes. And eventually, usually the wound will heal in by itself. It heals in by what we call secondary intention. The wound contracts, it makes granulation tissue, little red beefy blood vessels, which we call granulation tissue. Then epithelium from the adjacent skin, the surface skin grows over the granulations and that causes a scar. But it usually it heals quite well. And that's very common to have at least small areas of necrosis where the incisions can separate a little bit. We have to keep them clean, keep changing the dressings, moist dressing covered by dry dressing, and eventually it can take weeks, sometimes it can take two or three months, but they usually heal in.